an overview of abiogenesis. With the recent discovery of phosphine in the atmosphere of Venus, interest in astrobiology is at its peak. It is however important to know that how life originally arose on Earth, what were the process involved in it, the theory surrounding the origin of life is abiogenesis. Abiogenesis is a theory which explains the original evolution of life or living organism from inorganic or inanimate substance. Abiogenesis proposes that the first life forms generated were very simple and through a gradual process became increasingly complex. Biogenesis in which life is derived from the reproduction of other life was presumably preceded by abiogenesis which became impossible once Earth's atmosphere assumed its present composition. Much details of this process are still unknown. A prevailing hypothesis is that the transition from non-living to living entities was not a single event, but a process of continuously increasing complexity that involved molecular self-replication, self-assembly, autocatalysis, and the emergence of cell membranes. The study of abiogenesis aims to determine how pre-life chemical reactions gave rise to life under conditions different from those on us today. Abiogenesis, due to the recent technological developments, has branched into an interdisciplinary field, taking aid from biology, chemistry, and geophysics, astrobiology, biochemistry, biophysics, geochemistry, molecular biology, oceanography, and paleontology. Now let's talk about the steps involving abiogenesis. Scientists have proposed a four-stage process of formation for the first life. The first one is formation of small organic molecules, amino acids, nucleic acids, bases. The second one is uh, this combine to make larger biomolecules uh, like proteins, RNA lipids. The third one is with self-organized by a variety of interaction into a semi-alive system. The fourth one is that gradually transformed into a more sophisticated from a living organism. Let's dwell into each stage in detail. Stage 1. Prebiotic Chemistry We can say Miller, Urey and more. So what is prebiotic chemistry? Modern studies of prebiotic, prebiological biochemistry to form organic molecules and biomolecules in stage 1 and 2 began in 1953 with the miller urey experiment. Early MU experiment used a reducing atmosphere with reactive chemicals CH4, H2 and NH3 plus H2O. Within two decades, most, geologicals, most geologists thought that early Earth had a non-reducing neutral atmosphere, mainly CO2 and N2 plus H2O that was much less reactive when these chemicals were used in later variations of MU. The yield of organic molecules were much lower. But the geological question about the Earth's early atmosphere continued through the 1990s and in 2005 calculations about gas from crude heats indicated that the atmosphere might have been reducing. Similar to the early MUA, currently the chemistry of Earth's atmosphere is in doubt. There have been questions about other aspects of miller urey experiment such as the choices of energy source sources and why newly formed products were isolated before they could be broken down by further reactions to ask whether the MUs were realistic simulation of condition on the early earth. In response to these questions and their own researchers, I studied a wide variety of miller urea variations using different reactant mixtures, energy sources and conditions and in the reaction product they observed a variety of organic compounds in amounts that spanned a wide range but usually were fairly low. Addition, scientists discovered that objects from outer space metros, comets contain interesting organic compounds plus H2 and these compounds would have become part of the reaction mixture when the space objects landed on earth. So the stage 2, we will talk about the stage 2. Stage 2 is polymer chemistry to make proteins RNA. The miller urey experiment are about stage 1 forming small organic molecules. In stage 2, problem occurs due to energetics because in water, the reactions to form larger biomolecules, proteins, RNA and DNA are energetically unfavorable and also due to competition. For example, during protein synthesis, a prebiotic reaction mixture would contain many different chemicals L amino acids and R amino acids plus many other molecules and the majority of newly formed bonds would not be the special peptide bonds liking only L amino acids 
found in natural proteins. The scarcity of L peptide bonds is a partially due to the fact in a watery soup the formation of these bonds is energetically unfavorable. Therefore, abiogenesis researchers have searched for and studied non aqueous reaction sites such as evaporated ponds or on the surface of minerals. Similar difficulties would arise in prebiotic formation of other important biomolecules. Problems occur in both stages of forming RNA, in forming ribose sugar, and some nucleotide bases. In stage 1 and connecting these together in stage 2, the prebiotic synthesis of RNA has been especially unsuccessful, but perhaps especially environments such as the surface of minerals could help the reactions. Now let's talk about stage 3 and stage 4, that is chemical evolution into the first life. Chemical evolution is the sequence of chemical chains in originally non-living matter that gives rise to life. The phrase chemical evolution is also used in astronomy and cosmology to describe the changing makeup of the universe's stock of chemicals elements through the deep time since the Big Bang, from hydrogen and helium immediately after the Big Bang to the full array of elements observed today. According to the prevalent theory, chemical evolution occurred in four stages. In the first stage of chemical evolution, molecules in the primitive environment formed simple organic substances such as amino acids. This concept was uh, first proposed in 1936. XLT was considered that hydrogen, ammonia, water vapor, and methane to be components in the early atmosphere. Oxygen was lacking in the chemically reducing environment, ultraviolet radiation from the sun provided the energy for the transformation of this substance into organic molecules. Proof of Abiogenesis The Miller-Urey Experiment The Miller-Urey Experiment was the first attempt to explore the origin of life. Stanley Miner simulated contents proposed be common on the ancient earth. The purpose was to test the idea that the complex molecules surrounding life, amino acids in this case, would have arisen on our young planet through simple natural chemical reaction. The experiment was a success in that amino acids, the building blocks of life, were produced during the simulation. The finding was so significant that it kick-started an entirely new discipline of study, prebiotic chemistry. Scientists now have a reason to believe that the gases used in the miller urey simulation were not actually the same as the of the ancient atmosphere. Because of this, many experiments have since been done in testing a wide variety of atmospheres and different environmental conditions. The results are fantastic. The molecules of life can form under a wide variety of ancient Earth-like conditions. The Miller-Urey experiment stands as the biggest confirmation for abiogenesis. Now we'll see fissile troughs process. The fissile troughs process is a gas to liquid polymerization technique that turns a carbon source into hydrocarbon gens through the hydrogenation of carbon monoxide by means of a metal catalyst. The feedstock is typically coal or natural gas, though more exotic and carbon neutral. Possibilities such as removing CO2 from the ocean or the atmosphere have been considered. This process is speculated to have been involved in the formulation of hydrocarbons in the early Earth's atmosphere. It will be interesting to see that how life, if it exists on Venus, arose from abiogenesis because its atmospheric conditions are quite different from those of primordial Earth.